Hi, everyone. This is Mike Leibovitz, Head of Americas and the CTO Office here at Extreme Networks. I'm really excited to have the opportunity to present today as part of the Innovations Channel at the Virtual Connect event. The topic that we're going to cover, it's, it's really got a lot of detail to it. The title of the session is called Journey to the Future. And really what we're going to be uh, describing and talking about is all of the opportunities that all of our customers have to come with us into the future. When we talk about journey, the key thing, the key ethos here at Extreme is that no customer is being left behind. We've made that true year over year through all the acquisitions, all the technology acquisitions that we've made. We've brought our customers forward and that is a very key and important aspect of our ethos that we deliver to our customers. And 100% that will be true as we move through this journey. Before we get started, you see up on the screen, a quick disclaimer, some would say a shout out from the Extreme Legal Department. We are a publicly traded company. I will be talking and uh, describing some of our futures, where we're going from a roadmap perspective. Things are subject to change. We certainly do our best to deliver on time as and as promised through our roadmap. But again, a quick shout out from the legal department. They wanna say hello to everybody. And now we can move forward, jump right into our content. So when we talk about the journey, we're really describing how to go from perhaps a traditional or where you were yesterday or last year, or maybe even a couple of years ago to come all the way into the future with Extreme Networks. You've heard a lot of sessions leading up to this where we've talked about cloud and cloud architectures, data, unlimited data, and all sorts of interesting things that we're doing with our customers around the effortless experience. And we have a couple of really important pieces that we want to share with you today as we talk about the journey. Another way to think about journeys is to think about migrations. So I may not use that word migration all too often. I might talk about conversions. I might talk about the journey, but they're all referencing the same thing. How do we go from perhaps yesterday to tomorrow? How do we do that in an effortless manner? How can we do that in a very simple way? And, a, and most importantly, a way that protects each and every one of the investments that you've made with Extreme Networks. So the journey, the journey will be a number of things, but first and foremost, the journey will be effortless. You've heard us use the words to describe the effortless experience, simple, intuitive, consistent. As we move through the journey conversation, you will see how each and every step along the way is, is to be simple, is to be intuitive, and is to be consistent. There is no aspect of our journey that is designed to be challenging for our customers or anybody that is, is implementing any of the extreme network technologies. We wanna make sure that it's simple to migrate, to convert your technology, that it's intuitive once you're operating your infrastructure, your new technology, and of course that it's consistent. And consistency is really, really tantamount to everything that we do here at Extreme Networks. We wanna make sure that the experiences that you deliver to your end users are consistent, that the outcomes that you drive for your businesses are consistent, and that perhaps the security that you deliver as well is highly consistent as well. So the journey will be effortless. That is the first, I'm gonna say, promise that we're gonna to make to each and every one of you that's watching, each and every one of our customers, an effortless journey that'll be simple, intuitive, and consistent. The journey won't just be effortless, but the journey will be to the cloud. Now, some people, when they hear us talk about cloud, they quickly jump into a thought that we're talking about a product. And yes, at Extreme Networks, we do have a product that leverages the cloud, what we call Extreme Cloud IQ. But cloud isn't, and again, it isn't just about a product. It's not just a management tool. Cloud is many things to many people that's out there. But three things that I'll hit on uh, quickly as we talk about the journey but why do you want to go to cloud? Why do you want to journey to cloud with us? Speed and agility are two real business outcomes, two real uh, aspects of your business that you'll want to consider. How quick can I deliver new services? How can I move as things change, as things shift in the world around me or even within my business? 
Can I take the technology that I have and do new things with it? And can I do that in a fast manner? And can I do that in an agile manner? The one word on this slide that's really important is choice. And again, when we talk about cloud, we're not just talking about a product. Many of you will recognize and probably quickly ask questions of, oh, well, once you go cloud, there's no technology that's on-premise or, or that's local. That's absolutely not true at Extreme Networks. Choice, choice is a big deal for us. Do we have technology that's purely and natively run in the cloud? Absolutely. Do we have technology that's run on-premise or locally, if you will? Absolutely. Are we going to retain both of those and continue to give our customers choice in how to deploy technology and how to consume technology? Absolutely. So the journey not just will be effortless, but the journey will be to the cloud. And the cloud will deliver much more than just management. The cloud will deliver outcomes for your business and in a meaningful way. One more thing to consider, the journey will be at your business pace. By no means are we here at Extreme Networks uh, going to force any of our customers to unnecessarily migrate or convert, whether it's consumption models, whether it's technology deployments. We're not here to force anything on our customers at all. What we believe firmly in is a partnership with our customers, partnership where we work with you at your business pace based on your business needs. And every one of our uh, journeys, every one of our migrations takes that into consideration. We wanna make sure that we protect your investments, the investments that you've made, that you've trusted with Extreme Networks. We'll continue to protect those and we'll give you the opportunity to move with us into the cloud for a variety of important business reasons to you as well. So pace is a really key concept as we set up this conversation today. But many of you are sitting there asking a really simple question. Okay, Mike, you talk about effortless, you talk about cloud, you talk about pace, but you keep using this word journey. Well, every journey needs a start and every journey needs a destination. We recognize that almost every one of our customers is uh, at a different starting point. And we don't consider this a race. Remember, we just talked about pace, not race, but pace. So we don't consider that there's a starting point where every customer needs to get to. All of our customers, all of our valued customers are at different places for different reasons based on your business. Perfectly fine. The key consideration here is where are we going? What does the destination look like? Where are we, from an extreme perspective, offering to take our customers on this journey? The rest of the presentation will describe what steps you can take to get on the journey, but let's look a little closer at this slide. The destination, it's a single destination. It's not a destination about a switch or an access point or a management tool or an authentication server. That's not at all where the destination is. The destination is everything that you see up on this slide. It's described very simply, measurable outcomes right at the very top. That is the key, if you will, KPI that we would use to describe the journey. What are the measurable outcomes that our customers can deliver? When we think about our customers, certainly there's at least three personas, the buyers, the users like the network administrators, and then the end users of the network. The end users are the ones that we're trying to deliver excellent experiences to, perhaps uh, the most critical aspect of building a network. So measurable outcomes, but how do we get there? We need to have choice, we need to have platforms, and we need to have applications. And we need to be able to deliver all of these pieces regardless of how your business is set up physically or even logically in today's world. Absolutely, we have customers with large single campuses, some that uh, operate in more of a distributed architecture, some that have branch. Today, we know more and more customers have work from home or even smaller site locations. And the key criteria here is being able to run technology at each of these sites equally, be able to manage the infrastructure and be able to extract the data from the infrastructure as well. So you can see that when we talk campus, distributed branch, and we'll talk about this more as we move through as well. We'll talk about the choice, public cloud, private cloud, local cloud as well. We'll always have choice 
for our customers across the migration scenarios. You look at the applications on the left side. When we talk about applications, it's not just that we're interested in things like NAC or wireless intrusion prevention systems. Those aren't standalone uh, applications that we're looking to monetize or to sell our customers. No, each of those applications fit in a certain vertical and a certain business outcome that you're trying to drive towards. You think about location technology. Many of our customers, like some of our retail customers, are looking for location intelligence to understand the movement of shoppers or associates when they're in a store. They're using that information to drive measurable outcomes for their organization. And for those reasons, we bring applications like our, our location and technology to the forefront, make it available for all of our customers to use across, use across all of our platforms as well. The last piece, and you would have heard some of us talking about universal platforms. Some people might say universal hardware, and that's okay. We could talk about universal hardware, but the reason that we say universal platform more commonly is that we're including the hardware and the operating systems together when we're describing a universal platform. So again, where are we going? Hopefully together, all of us, each and every one of you that are out there, each one of our customers is to a single destination. That destination will be cloud driven. That destination will produce an effortless experience and getting to that destination is absolutely going to be at your business pace. Now, let's move forward. At Extreme, when we describe our portfolio, we use these three words. It's very simple. We think about our portfolio this way. We think about cloud, we think about platforms, again, hardware and operating systems, and we think about services. This is the way that we describe our, our portfolio whenever we're speaking to anybody, our customers or, or anybody outside of Extreme, even inside Extreme, we describe our portfolio this way as well. And it's important. And what you'll see and, and what I really implore you to think about is we're not just a hardware company. Do we build great hardware? Do we love our hardware and operating systems? Absolutely. And we'll continue to do that. That's a, a major investment for Extreme is building high performance networking equipment, both wired and wireless from data center out to the access layer, wired and wireless. We'll continue. That doesn't become less of a focus for us. Cloud, again, it's not just a product. And I can make the, the sort of joke, it's not just a way of life, if you will, but there's much more to cloud than just a management tool. And we'll talk about that as well. Services is a very key part of our product portfolio. Later on on this channel, actually on the IT Warrior channel as well, you're going to hear from our services team as well. I'm going to touch on services uh, as part of this conversation as well. But it's key to think about services, cloud, and platform anytime that you're thinking about the investments you're making in Extreme and perhaps the journey or the migrations that you'll take with Extreme as well. So portfolio. Now, as we start to talk about the, the journey, the right place to start is describing consumption models. Now, consumption models are something that perhaps not everybody's familiar with, and that's okay. We're going to step through this slide, and I'm going to try to do it slowly and somewhat methodically. You'll notice that there's an iceberg on this slide, and certainly when I build it, there's going to be another iceberg on the slide. I didn't choose icebergs because I live in Canada, although ice certainly makes me happy because we can curl and play hockey on it. But iceberg is an amazing visualization for this part of the conversation. Again, it's the right starting point for the conversation. When we think about different consumption models, and I'm just going to let it build so you can see the full slide. When you, when you think about these consumption models, there's really two conversations that are prevalent in our industry. One, where people are talking about on-prem and perhaps perpetual licenses as the form of monetization, how you pay for it, how you buy the technology. Then there's cloud. And in many scenarios, most people will refer to it as an as a service, like SaaS, software as a service, where you're paying a subscription fee. Why is this slide interesting? Well, Oftentimes, when conversations come up around perpetual licenses versus subscription, the top of the iceberg is what's being compared. 
And that comparison is not a TCO comparison. What I'm suggesting is that many look at what is the price of a perpetual license versus what is the price of a subscription license. I multiply that and then I make a determination that one is more expensive than the other. That's one way to look at it. And that's one way to think about consumption models. But I would suggest that you're missing a big piece of it. That's the part that's underneath the water level, if you will, when you look at this iceberg. There's a lot there. Now, this is an industry view. So this view I'm sharing to set up a framework and set up a conversation. I'm not suggesting that every piece of this is true or relative to everything that we sell at Extreme Networks. Those will be the next couple of slides. But if you look at some of the costs related to a perpetual license, there's a lot more than you may not be considering beyond just the initial price. There's things like the implementation, the training, the IT personnel, the maintenance, you know, other licenses that might come on top of it, more hardware that you may be uh, requiring, the physical security, the ongoing maintenance of all of those hardware and software that's running on your premise. All of those things are part of a TCO. It's the correct way to calculate a complete TCO. So again, it's not just the one-time payment, the capital expense of a perpetual license that you should consider, but the complete TCO is everything that sits under that water level on the left-hand side. Now, typically when you think about a SaaS model, a SaaS model, yes, you're paying a subscription, but that SaaS model really is taking care of all the things on the left-hand side that adds up in terms of the TCO, how much it actually is costing you to operate. And so when we think about as a service model at Extreme, you'll see that our migrations are not uh, about taking a customer from one type of payments to another type of payment, but it's actually very different. It's actually changing the TCO. It's changing the value proposition from, yes, one form of payment with a, a much heavier weight that's carried with it in terms of TCO, all the operational things, all the OPEX that might be budgeted for or accounted for somewhere else on your PL or on your accounting ledger versus the right-hand side where the subscription takes form of the management and shifts that to the responsibility of the provider. So again, an industry model, this is a consumption model. It sets the framework. Now, some of you are thinking, hey, Mike, this is great. You live in Canada, you love ice and you love icebergs. What does this have to do with the rest of the conversation that you're promising? I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that are saying, just show me how I can migrate my switcher AP to the cloud. That's coming. Just hang on a second. Let's be a little patient. The capability comparison now comes in. So again, the last slide is showing those two, um, those two icebergs and is giving you an industry view of what TCO uh, would look like or should look like in terms of how you calculate it from a business perspective. This slide starts narrowing that down more from a network infrastructure perspective, from an extreme networks perspective, as we think about the consumption model capability. How do we compare uh, a product or technology that we sell with a perpetual license versus one that's being sold as a service? Now you can see, green checks and red checks. It's really kind of key as you look at that uh, far right-hand side, the as a service side, when you're thinking about, well, what else am I getting? So in a perpetual license, I can onboard devices, I can configure devices, I can monitor devices, I can get reporting and I can get some advanced applications. That's all well and good, but there's a pretty long list of things that I don't get with a perpetual license. I don't get automated backups, I don't get extended data duration. I don't get comparative analytics. I don't get machine learning. And I certainly don't get an ISO certification on top of it, unless your organization is doing that yourself in your own data centers. You can see that in the perpetual world, the products and technology that we sell, ultimately, when it leaves extreme and lands at your company, you're responsible for the ongoing operation, the maintenance, the backups, all of those things. And I'm not here to tell you that that's a bad way of doing business at all. That's not a bad way of managing a network. I'm illuminating the difference between perpetual and as a service. When you look at that right-hand side, the as a service, there's a lot of additional checkbox. Now, yes, I can read the rest of the slide if you'd like me to, and maybe I will, maybe I won't. But what you can see is the clear difference when 
your consuming and as a service model, should you expect more things that actually create a much higher level of value when we think about the TCO? It should somewhat reduce all the heavy things that you're doing to keep the lights on yourself. Are you getting automated backups? Are you operating out of an ISO certified cloud? Are you getting machine learning and comparative analytics and the extended or unlimited data duration that we're offering as part of Extreme Cloud IQ? Those are some of the things that you can think about when you are in a consumption model and as a service consumption model that you'll get. So again, it changes the TCO conversation in a very meaningful way. Let's move forward. Now we start talking about some products. Hopefully everything that we have uh, that we or I have covered so far is making sense. Now, when we think about the choices, now remember the word choices is very, very important because we're not saying it's a forced decision path. Choices, are we giving our customers choices? Yes. Are we taking options away from our customers? No. Is there an appropriate decision that each one of you will make for your business? Absolutely, and we're here to support that. If you look at this right side now, we're talking a little bit more at the product level. We're thinking a little bit more about what Extreme builds and sells on a day-to-day -day basis. You can see looking from the, the bottom up, the XMC suite, XMC, also known as Extreme Management Center. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it, probably a ton of you joined this session to find out and learn more about Extreme Management Center. And I'm absolutely going to hit on a lot of points about Extreme Management Center in just a couple more minutes. You'll have the full story, the full picture, I promise. The perpetual model today, we sell Extreme Management Center, the ability to manage wired and wireless networks, some of the apps that come with it, some of the advanced applications that you can buy as well, things like Extreme Control, Extreme Analytics, those are sold in a perpetual license model. Again, when we talk about perpetual license, we think about that iceberg, but typically the way it's sold at Extreme is a perpetual license and then an ongoing maintenance cost, a yearly maintenance cost associated to those applications. You can see beyond that, the customer, all of you out there, are responsible to manage everything administratively, the hardware, the, the operating system, the updates, all of those things happen um, on your cost at your operational expense. Again, from a TCO perspective, those are the pieces. This is the perpetual model as it's deployed on premise. When we continue to paint out the slide, you'll see the as a service model now changes. Now note, you'll see up at the very top, it says cloud and on premise. Remember, I said it at the beginning and I'll probably say it again before this presentation's over. Cloud does not mean cloud native or cloud only. We have choices to deploy technology on your premise. Some would say locally. That option will remain in our portfolio. We are not taking that away. And in fact, you'll see just in just maybe a couple more slides, this concept of site engines. You may have actually heard more about site engines on the previous session just a couple minutes ago on this channel, where we were describing, and perhaps we use the word enterprise engine, what we're really talking about is an advanced engine, uh, a capability um, to deploy on-premise, but have it managed from the cloud. This is where XMC is going. From XMC, we have an upgrade path into a site engine. There are applications that are gonna run from XIQ. You see XIQ, the next level up. XIQ is the, Acronym, we love acronyms at Extreme Networks, and I apologize if I didn't introduce all of them. XIQ is also known as Extreme Cloud IQ. Shouldn't be too hard to get there, but the next box up is Extreme Cloud IQ. On top of Extreme Cloud IQ, we have two application designations. One, which is the essential applications. The other are the advanced applications. Those essential applications are gonna run in the cloud. They'll be cloud native applications. I'll describe that in just one minute. The advanced applications are actually going to run also as site engines. Things like Air Defense, uh, a, a fantastic product to secure your wireless infrastructure, your over the air. Air Defense will be an example that will highlight that it's turning into a site engine as well. I'm gonna cover all this, so if you have questions, feel free to ask them in the chat window, but 
Let's just focus right now on the as a service model. I promise I'll describe everything you're seeing on the right side if it's if it's new. But in this case, you're really getting a right to use an annual subscription. That subscription includes the maintenance. There's no additional charge for application maintenance. So remember, on the left hand side, you're buying a perpetual license and there's an ongoing, there's a yearly maintenance fee associated with that software. On the right side, that's not the case. There's an annual subscription that includes the maintenance and everything that you would require to upgrade and call GTAC and all that great stuff. That's all included. But look at the rest of the list. Extreme responsible for hit list updates. Extreme responsible for continuous operation. Extreme responsible for the data and application security. Extreme responsible for the extended, some would say, unlimited data duration and backup. You can see that there's a long list of things that Extreme becomes responsible for in the as a service model. That statement is true if you're deploying in the cloud or if you're deploying a site engine locally on your premise as well. Same truth in both cases. Let's move forward. So when I describe these site engines, what's the value of a site engine? Why, why do we really need a site engine? As I described it a second ago, maybe it was 10 seconds ago, Extreme Management Center is going to have an upgrade path into a site engine. Other on-premise technology like Air Defense will have an upgrade path into a site engine as well. They'll be deployed locally. You can deploy them on your own premise. They'll be connected to the cloud. In all likelihood, as time progresses, they'll be deployed as containerized services on a container appliance. All of that will be uh, offered to you through a subscription consumption model through an as a service consumption model. Why do you want this site engine? Well, if you think about it, the flexibility, the deployment flexibility, do I want some of my applications or do I need some of my applications to run locally in my own data center? Maybe I do for security reasons. Maybe I do uh, for uh, internet access reasons. There could be a slew of business reasons why you want the flexibility to run on your premise. That'll be available to you. Scale. Think about uh, some of our technology. I'll, I'll use Extreme Management Center as, as an example. Today with Extreme Management Center, if you want a manager of managers, it's not available. In the site engine um, capability, that changes. The, the cloud itself becomes the mom, the manager of managers. Well, this is a great, a great concept for customers that have large, uh, I'm gonna say large campus environments or even distributed environments as well. So you think about flexibility and scale. The duration, well, we hit on it a few times, but being able to extend the data duration policy as you connect site engines out to the cloud, you inherit that policy as part of the as a service model. The intelligence, you get the ML AI framework as well for the data that's being taken out to the cloud, a huge upgrade and a huge uplift for your own business and your own business intelligence. And then back to the iceberg analogy, and I'll probably pick on it. It is actually a pretty hot day here in Toronto and Canada, but you know, ice is, ice is where we wanna be. But you think back to the icebergs and being able to reduce the OPEX, right? Change the TCO of what it truly costs you to operate a network infrastructure is really where the as a service model really starts to shine. A couple of examples. So this slide probably won't take me too long because I think I've described it, but there's sort of this concept where we're going, not sort of, there is this concept of where we're taking our technology into the site engine. So Extreme Management Center, XMC, is actually going to have an upgrade path to become a site engine. Other technology like Air Defense or ADSP, if you're familiar with that acronym, Again, we love our acronyms here. ADSP will have a path, an upgrade path to become a site engine as well. Where do we go from here? So applications, I was just talking about uh, extreme air defense. There's really two concepts and one of the earlier sessions led by Hardik would have touched on this in greater detail. I'm gonna touch on it just for a minute to keep the entire conversation whole for this, for this particular session. But where our applications are going is really one of two places and actually a little bit of both, which is really, really cool. You're gonna hear us talk about essentials and essential capabilities. When we talk about essential capabilities, we're talking about capabilities like guest access, like 
location data, like wireless intrusion services, those are going to be added into the pilot license for Extreme Cloud IQ. That means when you buy the primary license, primary license uh, of Extreme Cloud IQ is a pilot license. We are including the essential capabilities, the capabilities that we believe are essential to every one of our customers in every vertical. You are gonna get those essential capabilities as part of your pilot license. I'm gonna say free of charge, but really I'm gonna say included with the package. So every one of our customers get the capabilities that we believe every single network requires to operate um, in a secure and consistent manner. But again, the site engine, right? Advanced capabilities. Now, when we talk about these advanced capabilities, we're really thinking about these site engines. These site engines are gonna be sold as Extreme Cloud IQ add-on licenses. They're not part of the pilot license, they're sold as add-on licenses. Why would a customer want to buy advanced capabilities like air defense or extreme location running in a site engine? Well, if we say advanced capabilities, that means that those capabilities will be more. And again, sometimes we describe them as enterprise uh, feature set, but really it's expanded feature set for a customer that is really looking for all the bells and whistles out of a certain technology. So again, when we think about extreme location, you know, would a retail customer want to, uh, or have the need to from a business perspective, invest in extreme location to drive better business outcomes? We believe the answer is yes. Would some of our customers perhaps in the education market look for advanced locationing technology? Maybe not. So for these reasons, we give essential capabilities to all of our customers as part of the primary Extreme Cloud IQ license, the pilot license. And then we offer add-ons to the Extreme Cloud IQ platform where we offer more advanced capabilities and we'll have those packaged and bundled in the site engine. So stay tuned for more. There's a lot coming with the application portfolio here at Extreme Networks. As I flip the 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 conversation really a key i shouldn't even say flip because it's part of the application framework and i think i said it before a lot of customers probably tuned into this session maybe just for this slide and if it's just for this slide that's okay hopefully uh you get what you wanted out of the session and you continue to lesson or listen to me and if not just rate my session really really high and that's all i'm asking but a lot of our customers were, have been asking about Extreme Management Center. And some of those questions are entirely fair. Hey, Extreme, you have a, a new cloud platform. You're really excited. You're doing a lot of marketing. We're not hearing as much about Extreme Management Center. Is it going away? What's happening to it? Well, hopefully this single slide will give you a really crisp understanding of where the technology is going in one or two slides. I'm gonna show you how to get there from a commercial standpoint. You can see on the bottom of the slide, I've painted up a couple of our uh, wired portfolios, a couple of our wired platforms. Remember, platform is hardware and operating system. And I've used a couple of monikers, most of you should be familiar with them, our Summit or Exos switches, our VSP and VOS operating system switches as well, and then our ERS or BOSS operating system as well. Now, many of you would be familiar with this side of the chart. And those of you that have come asking for the answer to this one question are probably looking something like the left side of this chart and saying, okay, Mike, okay, Extreme, I have my switches, I'm managing them with Extreme Management Center. Do I have a path to the cloud? What does that actually look like? The path to the cloud is simple. It's an upgrade path. The upgrade path is from Extreme Management Center into a site engine. That site engine is going to have all of the capabilities of Extreme Management Center, and it'll be connected to Extreme Cloud IQ. You see the word navigator there. Navigator is a license. It's just under the pilot license um, from a portfolio perspective. Navigator is the license you use to connect the site engine. The key takeaway from this slide is that, again, going back to choice, you have today, your switches are being managed by Extreme Management Center. 
that's fantastic. You have a perpetual license. You're paying us, hopefully, your ongoing maintenance. Life is great. Your network's healthy. Everything's good. You can continue there. There's no concern. If you want to come to the new or as a service consumption model, there's an upgrade path. Again, I'm going to explain commercially in just a second or two slides how you get there, how you get to the uh, site engine. But this is where you're going from a technology section, but from a, a technology standpoint, sorry. But wait, there's more because we recognize that there are customers, not just switching customers, but I'm going to give you another example. There's some customers that may look like this. We may have some identify customers, also known as campus controller customers. We might have some identify customers that have their controller connected to Extreme Management Center. And guess what? It's the exact same story. You can upgrade to an uh, Extreme Cloud IQ site engine, and there you go. You're up into the cloud through the Navigator license, and away you go. So we want to make it just that simple. Again, this is a technology, a technology slide. I'm going to talk about the commercials in just one second. But let me just complete two more slides from an infrastructure standpoint, because I know these are top of mind. These are probably the next two slides, probably what most of, if you didn't come just for that one slide, most of you have come for probably one of the next two slides. And then probably some of our wireless, great wireless customers are coming for slides that are, are up, they're queued up, they're just coming. So everybody stay tuned. So wired portfolio, what happens with our wired portfolio? What is the journey for the wired portfolio? Well, first of all, there's a platform journey. Again, hardware and operating system. You're going to hear a lot about universal. You're going to hear us say the words universal platform. Both the Summit XOS and VSP uh, VOS platforms are moving into the universal platform. There's a huge advantage. These are multi-persona uh, switches, switch infrastructure, that you can actually change the persona of them. And we'll show you that. We've been demonstrating that here at Virtual Connect. We'll show you how you can change the persona. Again, going back to investment protection, you can't make a wrong purchase with Extreme with universal platforms. You have multi-persona hardware that can operate and function in your network as you deem fit. Now, from a management standpoint, the journey looks like this. You actually have four choices if you are a Summit or, or a Voss VSP customer today. Well, one, you certainly can manage your switches locally through CLIs or onboard UIs like EDM. As an example, again, we love our we love our acronyms. Uh, I should have probably put a whole glossary of acronyms at the beginning of this session. I'll do that for next year's Virtual Connect. I do apologize. Sir, and I have to apologize because I'm from Canada. No more iceberg jokes. XMC, I just showed you that on the very last slide. You absolutely can manage our switches from XMC. There's no problems. You have an upgrade path from XMC to a site engine where you can manage that uh, that manage that switch through the site engine. Again, you essentially have parity between XMC and an XIQ site engine. You're going to have parity. You're not actually going to lose any functionality. What you're going to gain in the site engine is the as a service, the TCO value that we talked about and connection to the cloud. But wait, there's more. If you're a Summit or Exos customer, you can actually natively manage those switches as well. You can manage those switches directly with a pilot license. Now, if you look at this, some might say, is there a right or wrong? Absolutely not. Goes back to the point I made right up front. We had giving all of our customers choices. There isn't a right or wrong. This is about partnership with each and every one of you. And we're here to help you make the very right decision for your business. And we promise that we'll continue to protect your investment. If that's not good enough on the wired side, there's more. So there are many customers that are out there that may look like this. ERS or the BOSS operating system actually has a fantastic journey available as well. From a platform perspective, there's at least two options, two upgrade options. One where you can go up to a VSP or VOSS operating system from a platform perspective. You likely would want to go up to a universal platform as they're shipping, as they become available. Fabric attached to the, or fabric to the edge, sorry, not fabric attached, but full fabric to the edge and multi-area fabric. Those are things that we are delivering that are coming. You'll hear more about that in the roadmap session 
uh, with Dan and Gregor. You absolutely should join that as well to, to learn more about this. Actually, Roger and Camille will also have sessions where they'll talk in great details about fabric technologies, where they're going, and they'll show you how it's being cloudified. You also have a path to Exos. Some of our ERS customers are moving over to Exos at the edge as well. Again, choices. ERS customers today can manage the switch infrastructure from XMC. The same way as Voss and Exos, you can move the XMC to a site engine and you can bring your ERS infrastructure out into Extreme Cloud IQ. And then finally, you have local options as well. CLI, EDM, those are all available to you. We're not taking those away. So many, many choices. Just recognize that with uh, the BOSS or the ERS platform, there isn't a direct option to manage from the cloud like there is uh, on the XOS and BOSS on the previous slide that I just showed. One more hit for wired customers that are out there. We've got a broad portfolio, again, from data center to edge. We have a lot of technology out there, but we don't forget about any of our customers. So VDX and MLX customers that are out there, we also have uh, journeys for you and those journeys do go to SLX. SLX is going to the cloud. You'll see uh, fabric technologies that are coming on that side of the portfolio, IP fabric, EFA fabric automation as well, unbelievable technologies to automate fabrics. That is also moving up into extreme cloud IQ. SLX and EFA put together cloudified fabrics, hyperscale size data center all the way through and through. We have multiple products in our portfolio that fit into different types of data centers. Don't get me uh, right or wrong on this topic. What I'm suggesting is that we have the right switching technology for you, depending on your business needs, your vertical, what you're trying to accomplish with any of our switching technologies as well. But again, we have a path for each one of our customers to come into the cloud and to do it in a seamless and simple manner. So how? Now we're gonna talk commercials for just a minute. And I'm gonna make this slide really easy for each and every one of you. When you choose your consumption model, well, there's really choice number one and choice number two. And I'm just gonna talk about Extreme Cloud IQ and, and Extreme Management Center for now, and I'll, I'll tie back to some of the applications as well. But you really have two, two options, right? Today, if I'm a new customer, I'm an existing customer, I can subscribe to an as a service model from the cloud. Uh, I can, you know, buy perpetually, you know, perpetual licenses plus my annual support. So I have option one or I have option two. That's pretty simple. I don't think I need to describe it much further than that. Now, many of you out there are saying, well, what if I'm in option two today? What if I have perpetual and I want to move to as a service? And one of the primary reasons is, hey, Mike, you've done such a great job describing icebergs and describing all this stuff about as a service. I want to move there as fast as possible. How do I do it? Well, we're here to make that effortless. We're going to make that very simple and very painless for you. You can upgrade XMC to a site engine for free. And we're actually going to let you convert your XMC maintenance to an IQ Navigator license completely free. No additional cost for the duration of your contract. If you have a one-year contract, two-year contract, three-year, whatever your contract is, we will let you convert those perpetual licenses into a navigator license, upgrade XMC to a site engine, and away you go. You're not actually losing any functionality at all. It's not, hey, Mike, there's this big caveat. When I go from XMC to the site engine, I've lost 20 things I've loved. It's, no, you haven't lost anything. You've gained a whole bunch of great things from Extreme. MLAI, data, ISO, all those things that we covered earlier, you gain all of those things. And guess what? We're not going to charge you anything to come with us on that step. So hopefully we've answered the technical side of XMC and our wired portfolio. Hopefully this makes sense. We've, we've also answered the commercial side. I'll say this for our applications, applications that are going to transition from a perpetual to a subscription or from, yeah, sorry, from um, perpetual to as a service, also known as a subscription, we're gonna follow the same policy. The same model will be applied. If you have an application today and it's upgrading uh, and you have a path to upgrade it into a site engine, fantastic. We'll help you do that for free. And whatever your maintenance contract is, we'll do the same thing. We'll convert into the add-on licenses that are applicable and away you go. We want this to be seamless, 
and painless. Uh, ultimately, we don't even want you to think about it. We want you all to jump in with us and come on the journey as quick as you possibly can with us. Now, I'm going to flip to wireless. And the reason that wireless, uh, we're, we pulled it out a little bit. So the previous section, we touched on Extreme Management Center. We touched on the wired portfolio. We touched on the applications. We're calling out wireless just a little bit separately. Now, this isn't the whole you know, new uh, novel that I'm writing. There's just another chapter in the book. There's not going to be a written test on this. If you are a wireless customer, I think you'll appreciate just the, the, the slight perspective that when we talk about wireless, the consumption model is just a little bit different because wireless is licensed a little bit differently than wired infrastructure is. And so for that reason, we want to step through it. But guess what? This isn't going to be, like I said, a whole new book. It's just another chapter in the book. And uh, I don't think we're going to have a written test, but maybe we should. So again, similar slide that you saw before, Perpetual, which is, which is the licensing deployed on premise. We talk about controllers like wing controllers, identify controllers, our campus controllers. You might see us talk or call it uh, as the XCC, the extreme campus controller. Of course, we use X in every acronym that we create, but the same things apply. We buy a perpetual license per AP. It's a one-time purchase. There's a recurring cost of some form maintenance on those APs or on the AP licenses. We deploy it on premise and, and away we go. In the as a service model, you can see that we're bringing those technologies into the cloud under the as a service, so cloud and on-premise. Again, when we talk about as a service and we say cloud, we don't just mean cloud native, we're talking cloud and on-premise. They come together, right? It's the option, it's the choice for all of you that are out there. You can see that we're offering from a controller standpoint, connect and navigator, and then some of the enterprise extensions, really some of those uh, advanced uh, licenses is really what it should say. Sorry, um, not to add any confusion. The enterprise extension really should say advanced applications. But you can see the right to use uh, that you get with a subscription. The subscription includes everything, all the access point licenses, all the maintenance, all the things that you're uh, used to, the update software, all of that stuff. Now, once again, you see Extremes Responsible, for the routine you know, controller backups and the data duration and the security from the cloud, the ISO certification, you get all of that stuff as you transition into the as a service model, even when you're deployed on premise. Very similar to the site engine concept that we talked about for Extreme Management Center. Again, another uh, capability comparison. This one, I'm definitely not gonna read the whole thing, but. You can see the perpetual as a service. In fact, this list is even longer when you look at it from a wireless perspective. The perpetual consumption model, of course, I can onboard APs, I can configure them, monitor them, troubleshoot them. I can do all that from a controller, You know, no big deal. But I don't have a lot of things in the perpetual model or I'm doing them myself. So again, iceberg example, the TCO is much higher than just buying a perpetual license the backups, the controller aggregation, the data collection, data duration, you know, I have no analytics, comparative analytics, no machine learning, no ISO certification. When you flip over to the as a service model, that all changes. Even when we bring the controllers out into the cloud, again, similar as we talked about uh, with the extreme management center site engine, same concept that we're talking about, we bring those out into the cloud with a navigator license, and now we're offering you a new consumption model that changes the TCO and the complete value proposition. Yes, we can back up the controllers. Yes, we can do aggregation of multiple controllers as well. We can become the, the manager of managers, extended data duration, analytics, machine learning, ISO. All of these things become real in that as a service model as we connect wireless out into Extreme Cloud IQ. So what is the wireless journey look like? And again, for those of you that have sat through all of the slides and you are waiting patiently for the wireless slide, here it is. Here's the one that will describe what the journey looks like for customers that have wireless infrastructure. And it's not gonna look that different. Now I'm starting to think maybe we should have a written test, but that's okay. We won't go with a written test just this time. Next, next year, next connect, there will be written tests. Uh, mark my word on that. So. On the wireless journey, 
In fact, I'm going to paint them both at the same time because they look identical. And we want to make this really simple for all of our wireless customers. If you're a campus customer or you refer to it as identify wireless or a distributed customer uh, on the wing side of it, the path, the journey is actually almost the same. Today, you likely have a controller on your premise. That controller has an upgrade path for identify. That upgrade path is to the campus controller, or what we call XCC. Again, acronyms are amazing here. From Wing 5, there's an upgrade path to a Wing 7 controller. Pretty simple. So my control and perhaps my data plane has been upgraded, and there's a path for that. Well, you can see from a platform perspective, again, when we talk platform, we're talking about hardware and operating systems. There are the path for the access points as we move into Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax technology to move the access point up and to the left into a Wing 7, um, into a Wing 7 platform or a Wing 7 operating system. That Wing 7 operating system actually has two personas within it. That Wing 7 operating system supports both the campus and the distributed mode. So identify customers and Wing customers can upgrade to Wing 7 and they actually have a dual persona AP right then and there that they can flip between modes, no question asked. But the story wouldn't be full and certainly wouldn't be full for the portfolio if there wasn't a universal AP. The universal AP, just like we described on the wired side, same idea. The difference with the universal AP for wireless is that there's actually three personas. Now, I'm going to try to keep it really, really simple. And for those of you that have watched the movie Inception, we're not talking about a dream inside of a dream. It may feel that way. You're living in the clouds. Everything's so nice and simple and uh, really fantastic here at Extreme. The Universal AP will allow you to either boot in cloud native mode, so a completely cloud native AP, which is what you kind of see on the right side of each of those images. The Universal AP can operate with a pilot license it's directly connected to the cloud and away you go. The Universal AP can also be booted into Wing 7. As I just described, Wing 7 can boot in campus or distributed modes based on your business needs. So again, an example of how we have protected each and every one of our customer investments. There's a path for all of our customers to upgrade to new platforms. There's a path for all of our customers to come to the cloud when you're ready, I should say cloud and as a service consumption model, when you are ready at your pace, as we said right at the beginning. Now, very similar, choosing your consumption model for wireless, well, it would be kind of crazy for me, unless I was trying to create a written test, to change the options, to change the consumption models. And it would just be a tricky multiple choice exam at that point, everyone would just choose C. But instead of doing that, we have the exact same choices to be made if you're consuming for wireless purposes. You can absolutely buy perpetual licenses, no problem. You can buy perpetual licenses with the support, right? No advanced cloud features. You can just go ahead and actually take your wireless infrastructure and connect it uh, to Extreme Cloud IQ actually for free with Connect. You can do that today. And we've shown examples and other sessions will show that too. A wing controller can connect to Extreme Cloud IQ, absolutely for free with the Connect level license, it's completely free. That's pretty incredible, Mike. Are you sure you said free? I absolutely said free. If you have a wing controller and you haven't connected it to the cloud, my question would be, why haven't you done that? Might as well do that. There is no harm, no foul. Please go ahead and connect your controller, your wing controllers to the cloud immediately. But the last option is the same idea. If I have a controller with perpetual licenses, and I have annual maintenance support on it, and I want the advanced cloud features, well, we're gonna let you attach the controller to the cloud, and then we'll take your current maintenance the exact same way as we described for Extreme Management Center and other applications. We'll convert that for free to the Navigator license for the extent, for the duration of the contract that you have in place with Extreme. So again, really, no reason from a commercial standpoint, hopefully uh, no friction. We're trying to make this as frictionless as possible for you to take your infrastructure and join us in the cloud and with the as a service model. So 
with all that, we come back full circle. Hey, Mike, hopefully we got through each and every one of these examples. There's a lot here. I, I, I said there was a lot of content that was going to come at you. Hopefully we move slowly. We've described the extreme portfolio in each sense, cloud, platform, services that are available. There are many more sessions on the Warrior and innovation channels. I implore you to watch all of them. You'll get more detail, more roadmap detail, more services detail, more hardware and platform detail. But what we really wanted to share with all of you on this particular session was where are we going from an extreme perspective? What is the journey that each one of you can take with us? What is the effortless journey? Mike, hopefully described it for you. Now he's even speaking in the third person. That's how excited he is about the effortless journey. <laughs> but switching back to first person, I really want each of you to, to think about all the opportunity that you have to come with Extreme to the single destination, the destination. We're looking to help you with your business outcomes, those measurable outcomes, those KPIs. We have a complete portfolio that wraps around it from cloud public, private, local, the applications that are usually vertical dependent, market dependent, that have outcomes or help you drive outcomes, depending on the type of business, the type of organization you have. And absolutely, we have universal platforms, hardware and operating system, both wired and wireless, that will continue to protect your investment and provide a migration path forward for you into the future. Hopefully, this presentation has been very clear and has provided um, at least a, a really good level set for everybody out there. Uh, I know there's a lot of questions uh, about our roadmap and where we're going, but this is really about the journey. This is about the journey to the effortless experience. With all of that said, I'm gonna take one big breath. No more jokes, no more iceberg remarks, except for that final one. With all of that said, I certainly appreciate everybody's time uh, for joining this particular session. I look forward to meeting and speaking with each and every one of you at the soonest opportunity that we have. Thank you very much.